In today's current environment, our country and we as a people, we are being tested in a more different way than ever before. Storm after storm, we are being hit by blows, leaving us in so much pain and the responsibility to clean up the debris after that storm. From COVID-19 to the heightened awareness and acknowledgement of the systemic injustices of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, and so many more, we are personally and collectively continuously being hit blow after blow. The Bible reminds us that storms will come. And I would verse to say that if you're not currently in the storm, you've just left the storm or on your way to the storm. So it's critical that you know that storms will come, but it's equally critical that you know how to perform when those storms do come. Hello, my name is Decatur Webster, and I am by no means affiliated with the National Weather Service, nor do I claim to be a weather expert. But I am a proud black woman, a wife, a mother, a daughter, and a sister with a story. A story about life storms that transform my thinking and my way of life. And I turn those storms into lessons. And it is my hope that today, that sharing my story will inspire, motivate, and encourage you in your next storm. My story. My story began in April of 2016. As a mother very excited to have a son, I delivered my baby boy Carter. At 28 weeks, he was premature. A preemie, weighing one pound, six ounces. Little did I know how this storm would take so many turns and twists. From being premature, at a time where mothers are typically looking at their child, gleaning, cooing, talking about its characteristics, and if they look like the mother or the father, I unfortunately was faced with immediate emergency personnel trying to respond to recover and restore my son's breath. Little did I know this journey would take five months in the NICU, four surgeries, several blood transfusions, about with pneumonia, jaundice, and so much more. But what I can tell you is, watching him wither those storms gave me so many life lessons that I've been able to use in the other storms. You may hear about Carter throughout today's speech. And so the purpose of this is that when you find yourself in the next storm, just remember Carter. But here are some of the lessons that Carter taught me, and I hope to share these with you. One, he taught me not to move prematurely. You see, as a preemie, Carter had to endure so much more than what a traditional child would have to go through. He had, to had an extended stay in the NICU for five months. On several occasions, I wanted to bring my baby home. I felt like if I can get my son home, I would get the strength and I would figure out how to take care of him. That wasn't our reality. Quite honestly, had I followed my first plan, I don't think my son could have survived. Because in the NICU, they were able to provide the care that he needed, the care that I didn't have at home. So in life, we will have storms, and every storm has a purpose. And so leaving your storm too early may cause you to miss out on your purpose or your next move. Number two, Carter taught me how to pivot quickly. Pivot is simply changing course, redirection. Carter's condition challenged us to raise him differently. We had to pivot our way of childbearing. Although we had experience prior to, they were no longer at play with Carter. So we had to accept the new norm that Carter is on the oxygen machine. Carter has a heart monitor. Carter has a feeding tube. 
So while most mothers are home preparing bottles, I'm home washing out bags for my son. And so why is that important? Because a lot of times in life storms, we tend to hold on to what the norm has been. So the dangers of not pivoting causes you to stay stuck right where you are. Carter taught us a valuable lesson that to pivot is necessary. Number three, leveraging your resources like your life depends on it. For Carter, this was indeed the case. From medical equipment to doctors, specialists, therapists, and other medical personnel, we had to, le had to leverage our resources to ensure that our son can survive. We had to depend on the medical equipment to work and the expertise of the doctors to make sure that our son survived and had a chance to thrive. And what did that teach me about life storms? Many times we tend to go through storms alone by ourselves. But Carter taught us a very critical lesson. And that is when you find yourself in a storm, it will be critical for you to take inventory of what and who you have access to. Your resources depend on it. The critical of your situation, the criticality of your situation may call for additional resources. So don't feel like you're gonna weather the storm alone. There's resources out there to help. We had to depend on those resources and there may be time for you to depend on those as well. Number four, trusting the process. Early in the NICU stay with his bout with jaundice, Carter had to be under a bilirubin light. However, he had blinders over his eyes. So in this isolate, he had blinders on with this blue light shining on him. What did that say? To us that say that the doctors were trying to limit the exposure to strict his sight because they were certain that had the blinders come off, it could have slowed his progress down even more or caused him more damage and harm. So how many times do we get in a storm and we try to figure it out? Many times there is a spiritual protection there not to let us get swallowed in the storm. What if what you saw and how you saw it actually damaged your, your journey? Many times those blinders are there just for that reason, to restrict you. For Carter, he had no idea what was going on on the outside was actually working for the good. The Bible tells us that all things work together for the good. And so we have to understand that trust in the process is just that. There's going to be some times where some experiences leave a bitter taste in our mouth. But we have to know that they work together for the good. In the analogy of baking a cake, had you laid all the ingredients out to bake a cake, you have your egg, you have the oil, you have the powder, you have some butter and some other ingredients. But if you were to taste those ingredients individually, they would be a bitter taste. But it's something about mixing the bitter with the sweet, the liquid with the powder. It's something about bringing that all together that produces a sweet aroma and a delicate treat for all of us to enjoy. What I'm saying to you is even in life storms, when they leave a bitter taste in your mouth, know that all things work together for the good. All things. Lastly, Carter taught us how to be resilient. Be resilient is, is bouncing back, preparing yourself, embracing yourself for the no. For Carter, he had to undergo many resuscitations, one after the other. And each time he was resuscitated, it almost seemed like the grit and his resilience, his fight got a little stronger. I really believe that Carter remembered what he had already gone through. And he used what he had already gone through to encourage him that he can make it through this. What am I saying to you? In life, in storms, it's going to be key that you are resilient. You're resilient in your storm. And you can be resilient if you just remember the battles that you've already won. 
the things that you've already made it through. Prepare for the no, because the no will come. The damage will come. Prepare for it. Being resilient is being able to bounce back in spite of. So Carter taught us a hard lesson on that. In closing, we have talked about the storms and the storms always being there. And we've talked a little about Carter's journey. But let me remind you that I am by no way saying that storms won't create valley experiences. And valley experiences are those, those experiences that are dark and they're lonely and they're dim. But there are some lessons that you can only get in the valley. And so they serve a purpose. After all, storms increase our endurance. Storms actually have the ability to change our behaviors and our, our perspectives, some of which we've been trying to change all our life. Storms also expose the faultiness in our foundation, our belief system, the things that we've been standing on. Do we really believe it or not? So when you find yourself in another storm, I encourage you, don't panic. Simply pivot. And how do you pivot? You remember these five things that Carter taught us. One, don't move prematurely. There's a reason you're in the storm. Get your lesson. Two, pivot quickly. Be okay with embracing the new norm. Don't hold on to it. Three, leverage your resources like your life depending on it. Because in many cases, this is true. Four, trust the process. Know that all things work together for the good. And five, be resilient. Be able to bounce back. Yes, you may be shaken. Yes, you may be repositioned, but be able to bounce back. Now, we've all heard of our storms, and I'll leave you with this. It is not about what you go through, but how you go through them that makes the difference. Thank you.